Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. We are in lesson number 9, Laplace Transform. And in this lesson, we learn the proof of shifting theorems in Laplace Transform. So, I want you to be ready with a pen, paper and the definition of Laplace Transform. So, you can pause the video for one minute and copy the statement. So, we have the first shifting theorem which we have already used long back. That is, if you know the Laplace transform of f of t, then you can access the Laplace of e power a t multiplied by f of t by shifting. Look at this, the graph f of s and f of s minus a. Now, you know that the graphs are the same but it is shifted a, uni a units towards the right. We learned in the last lesson. And there is another very, very, very important theorem, sh second shifting theorem. So, similarly, if you know the Laplace of one particular function, then you can have the Laplace of uh, the shifted function multiplied by the shifted unit step function and it will be e power minus a s f of s. And one very important note. Anyway, I am not going to prove this. Um, what you call this note comes as an immediate consequence of second shifting theorem. But this is very important, especially for the next lesson, where we use shifting theorem and find the Laplace transform of uh, what you call piecewise functions. Because second shifting theorem helps us find the Laplace transform for piecewise function and once more I am repeating please don't miss lesson number 8 in lesson number 8 we learned a lot about unit step functions it's going to help you in second shifting theorem and in the next lesson and it might help you in other subjects also where you deal with signals functions etc or where you want to control the functions and all anyway let's not waste our time let's start with the first shifting theorem. Okay, shall we start? Now look at this. It's given that Laplace of f of t is f of s. So that is exactly where I'm going to start. So I'm going to write given Laplace of f of t is equal to capital f of s. Now let me ask you one question. Do you still remember the definition of Laplace transform? Do you still remember Laplace transform was an integral? Yeah. Okay. I want the raw definition. We learned long back in lesson number one. Okay. So, the Laplace is actually integral 0 to infinity e power minus st into f of t dt is equal to f of s. So, let us call it equation number 1. Now, let me check what am I supposed to prove. Okay, I am going to start with the left hand side. Can you please tell me the left hand side? Laplace of e to the power a t into f of t and that will be Come on, tell me. Use the definition of Laplace. Integral 0 to infinity e power minus st. And this is our function, right? When it was f of t, you copied f of t. If it is sin t, you will copy sin t. If it is a smiley, you will copy smiley. If it is something, you will copy something. Okay, so let us copy the same thing. Now, what is a to the power m into a to the power n? Ah, it is a to the power m plus n. So, what happens is we get integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus st plus a t. Okay, now I can see something common. So, that will be 0 to infinity e to the power. I am going to take minus also common and I am going to write s minus a into t. I hope that did not give you trouble. Look, 
t is common so i kept it on the right side and minus is not common but i made it common i made this plus as minus of minus okay now wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute i saw something similar here look look at equation 1 very carefully when you have e to the power minus st our laplace transform was called f of s and remember the function has not changed so i am 100% sure this is f of s minus a that's it that's first shifting theorem once more i'll show you that look at this zero to infinity e to the power minus st f of t is given to be this is what they have given is given to be f of s now check this now check this and you can write by equation 1 look dt f of t everything is same zero to infinity the only difference that i see is s has been replaced with s minus a okay that's it that's first shifting theorem in laplace transform okay now let's go for the second shifting theorem okay here we have second shifting theorem now you know uh, like what you call how to start okay so what do we do first we will write given so tell me what is given yeah it's given that you know the laplace transform of a function called f of t and the answer is f of s now what is the definition of laplace transform yeah integral zero to infinity e to the power minus st into f of t dt will be equal to capital f of s okay like before let's call it equation number one now let me check what am i supposed to prove okay i have to prove that laplace of this stuff is equal to this and i hope you watched lesson number eight because uh, unit step function is explained in the previous lesson so let's start so first of all i'm going to start like this f of t minus a multiplied by u of t minus a this will be f of t minus a multiplied by i hope you remember the definition of uh, the shifted unit step function when t is less than a the value of the function is zero and when t is greater than a the value of the function will be one now please multiply that is f of t minus a in case you are not able to understand what i did just now it clearly means you didn't go through the last video properly so make sure you learn everything the geometry the graph everything about unit step function now zero into something will be zero and one into something will be the same quantity okay now i think we are ready look i'll start with the left hand side so the left hand side tells me find laplace of f of t minus a u of t minus a and what is the definition of laplace okay come on tell me what's the definition of laplace integral zero to infinity e to the power minus st and whatever be the function just copy it okay now you can see that this function is a piecewise function it is defined in two pieces or two parts so i'm going to split this integral accordingly the first integral is from 0 to a and the second integral is from a to infinity now from 0 to a you can see that this function vanishes so it will become e to the power minus st multiplied by 0 dt and in the second integral it becomes e to the power minus st and you can see that the value of this function becomes f of t minus a dt okay now we are ready ah this is so simple 
integration of 0 of course it's a definite integral so that will be 0 and right now st into f of t minus a dt now look at this let's go and check what are we supposed to prove look you can see that or it is like obvious that we need f of s and f of s means laplace and laplace means equation number one and equation number one means the limit starts from zero to infinity look at this the limit starts from zero to infinity right the limit starts from zero to infinity so what we do is we have to somehow manipulate this and make it 0 to infinity or try to make it 0 to infinity and that's very simple you might have come across so many integrals like this in your first semester second semester etc so let's put u is equal to t minus a the first thing to do let us go for the differential so du is equal to dt minus 0 so that means dt is equal to du i am going to use it so i will mark it okay next the next one the value of t so i can see that t is equal to u plus a maybe we need it somewhere anyway i will color it and keep it now the third thing the most important thing that is the limit now look at this these limits belong to t so what we see here is t is from a to infinity so if t is equal to a then u will be equal to a minus a that is 0 and if t is equal to infinity u will be infinity minus ah, infinity minus any finite number is infinity okay so i am going to mark that okay these are our new limits u equal to 0 to u equal to infinity so we are ready for the substitution so let us make it like very clear okay i will start from here lhs is equal to tell me what are the new limits u is equal to 0 to infinity and now tell me what will happen to t look at the green part what will happen to t e to the power minus s into u plus a and again what will happen to yeah t minus a is u and dt and du are the same so this is 0 to infinity e to the power minus s u minus s a f of u d u this might sound silly but it might be useful for someone what is a to the power m plus n isn't it a to the power m into a to the power n yeah of course so this becomes integral 0 to infinity can you split this thing e to the power minus s u e to the power minus a s it is actually s a that is the same thing f of u d u now listen very carefully this integration depends on u so this is a variable this is a variable but this quantity is a constant look this quantity does not have u so i am allowed to take this e to the power minus a s outside now let me ask you one question before you ask me in your first semester you might have learned about properties of definite integrals can you just evaluate this and then can you please evaluate this and after that if you feel like doing it you can evaluate it what i am trying to tell you is in a definite integral 
the variable the variable does not matter you can use any variable you like you can use x or you can use y or you can use w or you can use any variable you are comfortable with but you should not change the limit you are not allowed to change the function or anything else okay so with that in my mind i'm going to change the variable and the variable of integration is u so look at this u u u so instead of u i'm going to use another variable that will be t so we get f of t dt ah oh, wait a minute this is equation 1 look 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 the definition of laplace transform okay so that's it finally we are able to prove e to the power minus as the capital f of s that's it um i want you to like what to go through the proof once or twice or thrice and if you have if still something bugs you feel free to message me or you can put it in the comment section okay now there is one immediate consequence before you start the next lesson i want it to by heart this part this is an immediate consequence of uh, the second shifting theorem so i want you to note this and wait for the next lesson or before you start the next lesson make sure this property is 100% clear because we'll be doing problems based on this particular note and remember this note is an immediate consequence of the second shifting theorem okay so i'm going to wind up this video right now if you like the video please like share subscribe and do share it with your friends okay and if you are interested in some other video so you can put it in the comment box below so i'll be back with the next video very soon so till then my friends bye